What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and in today's video we're going to be talking about adding rooms. Now I don't know if you remember like a few videos back or two videos I think where we talked about the structure of how the collection or the database is going to be. Every user is going to have a collection of rooms. You know they could have lots of rooms so they're going to have a collection of rooms and so that way people could actually you know get inside that room and start chatting. Um, so yeah, in this video, we're going to be focusing on the room side of things, just collecting rooms or adding rooms to a specific user's collection and also displaying those rooms on the UI. Uh, but the thing, <laughs> obviously I do have a template for this and we're going to be using that template. So just grab all of this, copy this, and then head on over back to the application. And inside of views, create a new file called rooms.view. Let me move this mic up just a bit. There we go. All right, and paste that sucker right in there. Now I do, since we did create view, uh, rooms, we do need to add that add that to our navigation. First of all, let's add it to routes. So grab this, copy this, and it's going to go to slash rooms. The name of it is going to be rooms and the component is going to be rooms. And over here, we do need to add that component rooms. There we go. Control save. Now let's add that to our application or navigation, not an application navigation. So right below right here, I want to add it in the nav. So I'm going to add it right here and I'm going to say basically rooms. We're going to go to slash rooms. And this is only going to be available if there are users. So if there is a user, then this button or this router link should appear. I'm also going to add one to the home page to that, to that button. So save this first of all, get rid of this and this in the home page right below this one. So just copy that over and this is going to go to rooms. And it's only if there is a user, we're going to go to rooms and capitalize this register. All right, control save. Now let's actually take a look at our application heading back. I'm already signed in as WDJ Weeb is never signed out. So if I hit rooms, we should, you should have this, you should have this little nice looking, you know, thing where you could type in a room and also add it. And it should show you the rooms down here. This is what we're going to be working with or on, not with, well, with and on, right? We're going to be working on this. So let's go back to our application and do some stuff in that HTML of rooms. Cause we do need to keep track of certain things. Remember like the input. So right here, I already have <clears throat> already, uh, presented to you with a V model, which is rooms. And this ref is different, right? Basically ref in view, it gives you a way to do stuff with the input, you know, delete stuff from the input, you know, make it at focus. That's what we're going to be doing. Once they hit that submit button, we want to refocus on this input. So just, you know, do stuff with the input itself. This V model is literally just for the variable, the data structure that we created, the variable that's only going to be manipulating that this ref is going to be manipulating this input field. Um, and this button is going to have a method at handle add, right? And that's pretty much it for right now. Oops, did I have this? I'm going to need to delete that in the, what's it called? In the, um, what's it called? In the template. Um, but let's start getting into the scripts down here. Do Okay, I was just making sure. All right, so scripts, we're going to be needing to, uh, oh, we, we don't need it Firebase right now. So in here, name. It was pretty much standard nowadays, right? You already know what to do, name, rooms. And then we're going to have a data, which is going to be a function. And we're going to return, return some data, which is just a room name, right? That's the only thing we're keeping track of. And at the beginning, it is null. So after that, we are going to have methods. Methods, there we go. And we called it a handle add and it's a function. 
honestly guys with all this help you know adding those templates is this video is still taking i don't know why it's taking a while maybe i'm just explaining things wrong maybe maybe let me know in the description i mean in the comments if i am explaining this in like in great detail you're like dude uh, you're doing too much i probably am that's why these videos are long anyways so in the handle add method what we want to do is actually add a room to the database right um but right now i don't have obviously we're not importing db or firebase we're not talking to firebase what we're going to be doing is actually referencing a method that we're going to be doing in the main application which is app.view we're going to be adding that method in here and then just passing it to the room so right here what i'm going to do is this dot we want to just emit so emit basically calling a function that we're, we're going to add later on add room and we want to pass in a parameter called this dot room name right so when we add a room we do want to give it or we want to we want to give firebase the name of the room so that way we could add that as well and then down below we're going to just say this dot room name we're going to set that back to uh null it's going to equal null and also down below after this we're going to this dot ref we're going to be using that ref ref of room name dot room name and we're going to just focus on that and you'll see everything going to play this is basic this is just javascript right here this is just basic javascript right so if you control save right now a matter of fact to test this out to test it out i'm gonna just comment this out so that way we can see what's going on right so over here if i just refresh obviously you're not going to see nothing down here because we're not adding nothing down here yet but if i hit this plus button you're going to see that it went away because it went to what where is it at it was null right and it should have focused on what did i do wrong what did i do wrong oh it's refs sorry with an s so refs dot room name okay remember the refs i'm referencing is this ref right here and it's called room name if this was called dog out down here i would say refs dot dog but it's not it's room name okay let's try it let's try it one more time and see what happens if i do that hit plus there you go and it focuses back on this now keep on typing hit enter type enter you know so it's going to keep on doing that focus that's what focus does all right now that we have we see that it's working we want to add this add room function in the app dot view so first of all what i'm going to do is just pass it along right here so at paste is going to equal add room because we're going to add that and down here in our methods we're going to create another method well actually no stop no no, no yeah where we are god i'm getting i'm getting ahead of myself so we're going to add a method called add room that's going to be a function and then right here this is basically where we want to create that room right so again this is going to be a little bit confusing try to keep up with me right so first of all we do need to go inside the collection of users so to do that we go to db.collection we've done this before collection and we want to go inside of users users right and i'm gonna to go to another line so that way wait what happened i'm gonna to go to another line so that way you can see what's going on right so inside of users we want to grab the document of this the user that is logged in right so dot doc we're gonna grab the document doc of this dot user dot i uid now inside of user like i said before it gives you a lot of things that a lot of information right the id the display name the email and all that stuff well we only want the user id since remember we're creating we're creating those user ids automatically this is what we're going to be referring to right so now we're inside of the users collection we're grabbing this specific user now with that specific user we're actually going to create another collection and don't worry if there's no such thing as like create collection it's just dot collection and then you type in whatever you want to put in here in this case i want to create another collection called rooms every user is going to have a collection of rooms right um if you don't have rooms in the database it will automatically create that collection for you guys so you don't have to worry about that bit now in this collection of rooms we want to add some things so when some person when a user adds a room we want to add another document right um and 
and inside this document we want to have more information right so if we just say we can't just say dot doc even though this is you can do this it will only create a doc with that uh, id in it which we don't want what we want to do is say dot add so that way it'll create a document and also add some information in there and you'll see what i'm talking about so right here we're going to have a name and the name is actually coming in from the add room i forgot to tell you this right here this is right here the room name we're actually passing in this we're passing the room name into the add room i'm gonna control save this by the way and in here i'm we're grabbing in a room name just like so so this name we're going to just say room name because we passed that in there and also I want to have a created at right created at and Firebase does give us a way to just create a timestamp. So Firebase dot fire store dot field this is actually a pretty long one field value field value dot server timestamp. There you go. And this is going to give us that uh, timestamp of when it was created. I know it's kind of long, but anyways, we have the name and the created at. OK, so we hit save right here as all working so this should be working just fine uh let's let's give it a shot shall we let's go back to our application all right so my room name is going to be uh, anime lovers and then hit this plus sign right so we created a room so technically we should have that room inside of our uh database so let's check that out if we did or didn't so inside of the firebase uh council go to the fire store so we have users we have two users now as you can see I'm gonna go to this one and this user has rooms and if you go inside of rooms you're gonna see that we have the ID of that dog now let me put these two in side by side so that way you can see what's going on all right it's a little cramped but I think this is gonna get it right so right here rooms is this dot collection rooms right and then when we said add basically this does two things this add does two things it creates a document and it also inside that document it creates fields with the name and the created at property okay so that that add does two things creates a document with a random ID and also uh creates some fields whatever we put in here that's why you could that's why we said add instead of just doc so yeah anyways now that we have this uh you know the rooms and all that now we will want, now what we want to do is actually display those rooms in the uh in that little box that i showed you right here in this name right we want to display those rooms right here so that way you could be able to click on it and then be able to join obviously but that's much more later in the video. <laughs> so let's go back to our application. And inside of app view. So the where I want to do this is on the mounted. So if there is a user, if there is a user, what we want to do is actually grab the rooms for that specific user. Once this is mounted, right? We want to do that automatically once this application starts. So but before we do that, I'm actually going to add another variable up above. And this is going to be called rooms and this is going to be an array now remember we're going to have multiple rooms and i want to store them in an array so this is where we're going to be storing all the rooms for that the the user logged in now before now not before now underneath right here in the if there is a user let me actually wrap these in curly braces so if there is an actual user what we want to do as well get uh yeah right there grab the rooms for that specific user now we do have to navigate all the way to the uh to that rooms so db dot collection we want to go inside of the users collection right users and then after this and tab it over dot doc we're gonna we want to grab the doc of the specific user so this this dot uh what was it oh user dot id and then once we have the document of that user, we want to go inside of the collections, the room collections. So collection rooms, uh, rooms. And then right here, this is where we want to grab a snapshot of the rooms. So dot snapshot on snapshot. 
Wait, is it? No, yeah, it's on a snapshot. Sorry. So on snapshot is going to give us a snapshot back. So snapshot. And we want to do some stuff with that snapshot, the data that it came back with, right? So obviously the data that it comes back with that snapshot has tons of information like the user. If you just leave your user by itself, it has all, a lot of information, right? So does this snapshot. It has a lot of information. Now we only want certain things from this snapshot from all the rooms, right? And since it is going to be returning some stuff, we want, we want to loop through that and then, you know, grab the specific data that we need. So what I'm going to do is actually create a temporary data structure, a temporary array to store that at. And then later on, the reason why I'm doing a temporary array is because later on we want to sort that temporary array and then add the sorted uh, rooms to the uh, rooms variable we created upstairs. So back at this, we have this snapshot. So I'm going to create a temporary array const snap data, right? We're going to set that equal to an array. And below this, this is where we're going to start doing a for, for loop on the snapshot. So snap shot dot for each, for each, and I'm going to say for each document inside of this. We're going to want to push, so snap uh, data dot push, dot push, there we go. And the things that we want to push is literally just the ID of that room and also the name of the room. That is it, right? Because obviously we need the ID just to have a reference of the rooms, which is the ID and also the name of it. That's that's basically all we need, right? So ID, the way we could get the ID is from doc dot ID since it is in the document level, right? It's just the ID. What is different is trying to grab the name of the room, right? This actually lives in those field properties that we set up, right? Because if you remember, let's go back to the browser. I'm sorry if I keep on going back. So this is doc.id, right? Doc.id, this is the ID it's going to give us back. Now, what I mean about the name, uh, since we did create these um, field values, this is not in the document level is actually there's a method that's going to grab that data. If you remember is doc dot data, which is going to grab all this. And then this, there, there, that's that method that's going to give us all this. And then we could get the name from there. I hope that made sense because I was a little bit confused with that myself. So the name is going to be in still inside of doc, but we need the data of that doc. So data, there's a method for that. And then in here, we're going to grab the name. And that's pretty much it. That's how you grab the, um, the field values of that. Now, for those people that are wondering why you did it for, for each loop, remember every, every user could have multiple rooms right now. Yes, we only have one room, but I could keep on adding rooms and therefore we're going to have to loop through all those rooms to grab the ID and the name. So now that we have that temporary snap data array, uh, array, array, well, what I want to do is actually, uh, sort that array and then push it up to the original room array. So right here, I'm going to say this dot rooms and we're going to set that equal to the sorted uh, array that we're going to do with the snapshot. So we're going to set that equal to snap data dot sort. And this is just a simple JavaScript sort. Now, the reason why I'm doing a, a JavaScript sorting method here is because even though Firebase, Firebase does offer sort methods, it's not case sensitive. So it's going to give you a wonky looking uh, array back and we don't really want that. So we want to just use plain old JavaScript to sort this array. So that way we could get that case sensitivity. So I'm going to just do, do the simple sorting of AB and I'm not going to explain what this is because this is very, very simple. Um, if I'm going to try to speed through this dot name dot to lowercase to lowercase. is less than b dot name dot to lower case. There you go. So if it's less than that, then what we want to do is return a negative one. Um, and then else return a one. So this is going to, uh, 
return one. This is going to sort it alphabetically, and I'll show you that in a bit. So we're pretty much done with the uh, room. So now what I want to do is actually pass that room variable to the navigation or router view. So that way we have a reference to that as well, or a prop passed into the uh, rooms. So our rooms is going to be equal rooms. And it was it rooms or room. Okay, there's rooms. Okay. Control save this. Now let's work on the room so that way we could um, actually, you know, loop through that. First of all, we do need to grab that prop. So props, it is going to be an array and we're just passing in rooms, rooms right now. Control save. So the place where we're going to be doing it is right here. This is a name. This is a little section and we're going to do it right here on this div. All right. So we're going to be looping through that rooms array, the one we got from props looping through that and then also getting the you know the name of it so right here for v4 this is how you do a for loop in view is going to equal and i'm going to just say i like to say item or you could just say room in rooms but i like to say item in rooms and i think it's complaining because we need a key yeah we need a key so that key is going to be key is going to be equal to item dot id the id that we're setting it to right because every item is going to have let's go back over here is going to have an id and the name so item dot id and then down here instead of name is going to be um item item dot name okay i'm like talking to myself <laughs> i'm like okay okay that's good that's good so this is all good, right? Um, yeah, so everything should be working. Let's give it a shot. Let's go back to the browser. Video chat app, refresh the page. And um, and why is not why is my name not showing up? This one, the one I just created. All right, let's just create some other one. Let me see. Um, calling all weebs. It's not showing up. Why isn't it showing up? Let's go back to our code and see what's going on. Oh man, this is not good. Why isn't it showing up? App.view. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, it's right here. It's not user.id, it's user.uid. Control save. All right, now let's go back. Okay, there we go. Anime, anime lovers calling on weaves. And if I do, uh, I'm gonna do another A. I'm gonna just do A B, so that way you can see that it is doing this real time and actually sorting it on top. There you go, A B. And that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. All I wanted to do was this room section. In the next video, we're going to be you know, uh, deleting these things, adding icons with Fought Awesome, and also checking users into your rooms or checking users into the rooms, all right? So that's in the next video, guys. I hope you stay tuned with that. And before we sign off or before I sign off, I want to thank you guys for watching my videos, spending your time watching my videos. It means a lot to me. So I hope you're actually learning something. If it's not, if you're not, please leave a comment down below on what I could be doing better so that way you guys could learn and grow with me. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.